Hi. <laughs> hey guys, so uh, my video uh, presentation is about how I make videos. So um, last year I did this uh, at the CycleCon. Anybody went to my thing last year? You went to that? Okay. You went to that, right? So uh, I'll try and delve into some different topics so I'm not kind of going over the same stuff. But uh, just real quick, uh, I'm a YouTuber. If you haven't seen my channel, it's uh, J-A-Y-O-E on, on YouTube. That's a Chinese phrase, Jiao. Jia means to add and yo means fuel. Fuel can be anything that you're passionate about. So add whatever drives you to succeed in whatever you're passionate about. So that's kind of like, so if anybody wonders what, what that means on my hat and everything, that's what that means. Uh, I wanted to travel around the world, and uh, I wanted particularly to share it. So um, it was right around the time I started posting on, on the internet, was right around the time YouTube was kind of getting started. So I, uh, I started posting videos and sharing my life in Asia, because I lived in China for 15 years, over 15 years now, like <laughs> almost 20 years. and. Um, and I felt, felt like I had something interesting to say. You know, I had a unique perspective as a foreigner, an American living in China, and uh, somebody that was attempting to really do a long trip around the world. So I gathered an audience together, and I started making videos, and I started making more videos, and then I broke the 100 video barrier, and then I broke the 1,000 video barrier, and then I think today I have like about 1,850 videos, uh, which are in a format called the lifestyle vlog. So. There's all sorts of different uh, video formats. You were watching uh, some documentaries if you were watching the videos that were on just before me. You know, uh, documentaries are cleaner, more, more, uh, more poignant. Maybe they have a little bit more focus on a topic and they uh, are a bit more broad. Lifestyle vlogs are about uh, daily life. They're about uh, the beginning, middle, middle, and end of a day in many cases. And uh, that's what I recorded on a daily basis, well, I traveled around Asia from China all the way to Malaysia, for the most part, stopping along the way, sometimes longer than, than I int intended. But then when I would stop, I would share the stories of uh, the life off the road. So uh, that's what a lifestyle vlog is about. Now, what a lot of people, when they like to jump on their trike or their recumbent and go off and make a, uh, tell their story uh, via their own format, whether it's Instagram or uh, TikTok or uh, uh, YouTube. Um, obviously, listen, there's a whole lot to talk about based on whatever platform you're posting on. Short form content, vertical form, for, uh, formatted content, you can go and do all sorts of different things. But what I'm gonna kind of talk to you about is how I go about uh, making my videos and how possibly you can uh, take some tips from that and maybe start formatting your own interesting videos because um, sometimes, you know, what is interesting to you might not be interesting to everybody else, you know? Uh, so finding a way to tighten up content, make it pop, make it interesting. People don't like to watch super long videos as much as they used to, unfortunately. Um, I really enjoyed making 15 minute videos and, and now everybody wants to make 15 second videos. So, so you gotta find some place in between to figure that out. I personally enjoy a story, um, I will tell you the, the inspiration that, that really drew me to making the videos in the first place, and then I'll get into more of the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, there was a gentleman, I forget his name, he was, it wasn't cycling the globe, it was maybe like cycling the earth. So he had a, he had a it, just a Facebook page, and he posted uh, little posts every day of his journeys around where he was. And he was riding all over the world. And uh, I always found reading those posts inspiring. So, you know, obviously make sharing your story, whatever you're doing can inspire people, which is great as a, a reason to do what you're doing. Uh, but I always found it was like, it lacked the visual sensation of watching his story. So I'd read these posts every day and I just wanted so much to see what he was doing, you know, to visually be in the shoes of him as he traveled around the world. And uh, when, I, when I started to conceptualize my journey, my tour on the trike, um, I thought, uh, when I do this, when I do what he's gonna do, I am going to share it in video form. 
And I'm going to share it also in hopefully a more interesting storytelling format. Also, during that time, a guy named Casey Neistat was publishing his daily vlogs. If, if anybody knows who Casey Neistat is, he's probably most, most uh, uh, he, he inspired me on, on how to make the daily videos interesting. And uh, it's all about telling a story. So you, you, I'm not the type of guy that's just gonna post a forward-facing camera and then just ride down the trail and post that in its entirety. I sort of wanna tell a story. So I've, I've kind of built a, a mixture of a storytelling, drone footage, uh, and other sorts of B-roll and uh, building a, a, a video from that. And then that video hopefully is around 10 minutes in length and hopefully is interesting enough to uh, entertain numbers of people around the world. So um, how do I uh, do the videos? So I break everything into, obviously there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Every story has it. And uh, I would recommend if you're, if you're interested in making entertaining stories that you follow that uh, intently. The beginning obviously is, is an introduction, you know, oftentimes you watch my videos, I'll have, let's see here, uh, this is a Red Rock ride, I'm, I'm, I don't have audio here that comes out, but I can, is there audio here that comes off? Must be, right? There's oh. audio that came out of there, is this audio? No, that's not, oh, that's power. I Welcome to another episode, today's a cycling video. And we are not in Italy, we are not in Corsica, we are in America. So like, obviously, there's a beginning. There's a short synopsis. I tend to get long-winded, <laughs> which is something that I try and trim down in. Take it easy, take it easy, have a good one. That I tend to you know, have to trim down in, in post. Uh, obviously, uh, when you start editing video, you learn that you do um, these uh, pauses uh, like that. Mm. I could add up all the ums and uhs and ahs of all my videos and it would go on for like four hours. <laughs> yeah, but you don't see that, but you know, it's there. But uh, typically you'd have a beginning, you introduce yourself, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna ride on such and such trail. You know, uh, it's a beautiful day out uh, and hopefully uh, you give them an insight into what you're, uh, what you're expecting from the tour. I'm, I'm kind of telling you, how to make videos from the standpoint of, of riding recumbents or traveling, because I'm guessing that's probably what you're looking for when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you're here sitting. So um, you, know, you can do that while you're sitting on the trike. You can do that um, before you leave the house. You can do that in the garage, standing next to your trike or whatnot. But try and just capture, uh, capture a feeling, you know, capture the excitement of, of getting ready for the ride. A lot of people, one of the, one of the biggest challenges of, of making a video is making sure to stop and create content for that video. It's not just about strapping a camera and going all the way. It's about thinking about what you want the story to be in the end and also adding to the story along the way. You know, the documentaries that you might watch have been meticulously planned shot by shot. I'm gonna shoot this shot today and I'm gonna do this shot tomorrow. But when you're out on the ride, you don't have the luxury of knowing what's coming your way often times, you know, you, you're going to see a squirrel or a, a chipmunk or a possum or a person or a dog or some sort of uh, a beautiful landscape and you want to capture that at that time. So you don't have really the luxury of, of, of doing that. So instead, what you have to do is be prepared to accept those experiences and record them when they come. Uh, in a lot of cases, I know people, they'll drive past something and they go, that was really nice. I should have, I should have recorded that. I should have shared that as in, in my video and they, and they kind of forget it. So stopping yourself saying, is this part of my beginning? And then recording that, putting that, you know, uh, putting that in your, in your device, whatever it might be, and then going throughout your day and as you interact with the world, look at it through the lens of the video that you wanna create at the end of the day or at the, at the post-production process. Because I mean, you can have, uh, we can go over gear, like, like I have lots of different forms of, 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 of tools to record my stories on the road. I mean, I have, uh, I mean, my primary camera is the Canon G7X Mark III. This is my favorite camera. It's small, it opens quickly and closes quickly. 
so I can get my picture, close it up, and move on. Let me see if I have a battery for the Sony. I, I, everybody asks me, why, do, why don't you like Sony? Anybody that knows to ask that question will ask that question. If you don't, that's okay. Okay, here's a battery for it. So this is another camera that is probably the, the competitor to the Canon G7X. If somebody asked me what camera should I use if I'm on the road and I'm recording, I would probably recommend that if they're interested in telling a story beyond, say, a GoPro. I don't carry a GoPro. I don't use them very much, but um, I just, I like the idea of being able to zoom in, zoom out. I like the high quality audio that you get off of a, a compact camera. It's like a hybrid between carrying a DSLR, which are DSLRs are those big cameras with the lenses on the front that tend to be a little bit oversized. But I'll tell you why I love this camera as opposed to this camera. So this is a direct, direct comparison. So I am going to go from open to close and close to open. So I'll hit the power buttons at the same time. One, and watch the lenses come out. One, two, three. Okay. All right, uh, let me do that again and hit record. So I wanna record a video, right? And I wanna record a video here. I'm gonna open and record. This one's recording and this one's recording. So this one delays by quite a, like three or four seconds. I wanna be able to record the thing I'm standing out in, in, in front of like as soon as possible. And I wanna be able to get it out and record as soon as possible. This thing is, it's like the quick draw of cameras, right? Now I wanna shut them down. So I'm gonna shut them down and I wanna have these in my panniers as quick as possible so I can move on. So I'm gonna turn these off. Isn't that crazy? How long does that take to close? You don't know how many times I've been riding around. I'm like, I, I just wanna, I wanna put it away and it won't close up, you know? It's crazy the amount of time this takes to, to boot down. And so I've found that this camera uh, is, is my camera of choice. It's the Canon G7X Mark III. It's about seven, 800 bucks. Uh, you can buy them on the used market as well. I have a, a literal stack of these in my, in my office because I go through, I have about eight of these now, like over the course of the last, well, last few years. The Canon G7X Mark I obviously was the first one. And, I, and I've, I've moved up to the Mark III, which has an audio port on it, so you can do microphones plugged into the side. So that's great. That's my camera of choice. Typically, I have a, a selfie stick. A lot of people ask me, uh, do you mount the camera to your trike You know, when you're riding around? How do you like to do that? And I, I do everything from the seat of the trike. The, I don't think there's a better tool as far as as, as, as travel goes, if you're looking for a human powered option to record your stories from, if you're doing the video format, then, then a trike. It's far and away, you can pedal, you can brake, you can shift, and you can steer and have one hand completely free the whole time. Obviously, I've configured this trike so braking and shifting is on one hand, but it's everybody, anybody can do it. And so you have the other hand free to hold a selfie stick, to fly a drone, to do all those things. And the thing that I, I, I don't like the idea of, of mounting a camera to a frame, because oftentimes you get that shake. Obviously there is in body stabilization and there's, there's technology that can help with that, but there's no better stabilization than the joints in your arm as they travel through to your butt that sits on the seat. There's all these points that it can absorb shocks. And by the time the camera is sticking out in front, you have all of that shock absorption throughout your body that travels to that camera and you can hold it pretty steady. Not to mention, you can be dynamic with the camera as you're traveling around and if it's mounted to your trike, there's not a lot of things that you can do other than you know, dismount that camera and pull it off your frame. So I really, I, one of the things when I, when I decided to, to do this journey and I, I sat on the trike and I, I went forward, I'm like, this is like a camera dolly, <laughs> you know? And I'm the camera dolly and I can literally just move uh, uh, flatly through, you know, uh, through, through any, almost any surface and I can have a nice smooth motion from which to record from. I'm like, this is great. And oftentimes if you ever saw me on the side of the road in Vietnam or whatever, I'm holding the camera here and I'm just using the, the trike as an opportunity to use it as a camera dolly. It's, 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 it's above and beyond the, mo the most practical way, in my opinion, to travel and try to tell stories from the seat. 
But let's just say you don't have 800 bucks, or maybe you don't have your camera with you, or, or you know, you just have your phone. I mean, I mean, depending on what phone you have, I, I really get frustrated when people tell me I'm waiting for the right gear. You know, I'm saving up for the camera, then I can make videos. If you really got a passion for making stories, it doesn't matter what you're using. It's all about the, what you're capturing, you know, and how you're telling the story. So um, if you've got a phone, you can tell all the stories you want from your phone. And, and oftentimes, especially with the new TikTok and Instagram reels and stories and stuff, it's actually better to do it from your phone than with, a, uh, with an actual full-on camera. And if you, say, wanted to go mobile and 100% mobile, the Osmo Mobile, which is the, the, the like, gimbal, is quite nice. And they even have uh, the selfie stick model that extends out. And you can have your camera stabilized. I don't have my, my grip on it right now, but uh, you can have, I don't know if you've, does everybody know what this is? Anybody doesn't know? Okay, this is, a, this is a gimbal. A gimbal is basically a gyro that holds onto a device and supports it in axis, whether it's this axis or this axis. And what this gimbal does is it'll hold your phone. I'm sorry, I don't have the, the, the grip. But it'll hold your phone and keep it so that no matter where you're going with the gimbal, the camera or the phone will stay stable. So, I mean, this is where you get people walking around and that camera, it looks like somebody has it on the, you know, has it over their shoulder, has one of those body kits where they're walking with you. It's very professional, you know? And this way you can have a camera that's pointing towards you or pointing, you know, you're, you're getting that dynamic shot of the trike as like you saw some of those videos there where the guy had that like really close, close video where he's coming around the trike, you can do that with your phone. And oftentimes you can get it as good a quality or, uh, or better than, uh, than a lot of the pocket cameras or DSLRs that are available. Now, there's also a product that I enjoy as far as gear goes. This is the Osmo Pocket. This is like a pocket-sized gimbal, and if you press it, if you guys can see it, you can turn it on, it boots up, and then the camera, the quality is not great. The, you're, it's, not, it's a little bit fuzzy. I mean, not, it's not fuzzy, it's just, it's not like, uh, it's not high quality imagery. The sensor's really, really small on it, which means that the quality, you're not gonna get the, the greater quality. But what I love to do is what you can do is set it up for a time lapse, and you can say, I wanna take a video from over here down to over here up, and I want it to be over the course of five minutes. And so you can like, let's say you're stopped at a coffee shop on the side of the road. You're sitting there with your trike. Your trike's right here in the foreground and in the background, everybody's having coffee and whatnot, and they're hustling and bustling, and you're sitting here, and you want that cool shot, and I know a lot of you have seen that shot where the guy's <laughs> sipping the coffee and the things are moving, people are running up and down the street, and the camera is panning across to the trike or the whatever the objects are in front, and the trike is the only static thing in the whole shot, and every a life is moving in around that shot. Well, that, that you can get with this little pocket camera. I mean, it used to be that the only way you could get that shot was it with an intervalometer where you'd hook it onto the camera and you had to have this amazing slide and tripod with a rotating tripod and it's all timed together. And the thing, you could still buy them. They cost like, I don't know, three to $5,000 if you wanna buy them. And they're extremely bulky and heavy and massive. But now you can get those kind of shots with something as simple as this. And it's, and it's really, really nice. And they're not they're so expensive, they're like 300 bucks or something for a Osmo Pocket. And you can do it in 4K. So you, you, use, you use the tools for the stuff that you wanna shoot, right? So that would be what I would use this for. I wouldn't necessarily use it for so much else. It also is very like, uh, like stealth. You know, people don't see this a lot, so you can kind of hold it in your hand and people won't feel uncomfortable. Because that's another thing we can talk about about video is, is is I am, <laughs> I can open this camera, flip the screen out. Oh, that's another reason why I love this camera, right? So this camera has the top screen, and, and some, a lot of people have asked me, and, and this one has a side screen, right? And you might think, does anybody, does anybody know what camera I like, the, <laughs> like more? Is the top, the top screen. Because when you're looking at yourself, which is what I was about to talk to you about, the idea of looking at yourself 
is a little bit vain, but you kind of got to do it in many cases if you're going to tell a story. When you're looking at yourself and your eyes are just above the lens, you can barely tell that you're not looking at the lens. But if your eyes, it's amazing how, how detailed your, your senses are. If you're watching a video and the person on the video looks off to the left or the right, you can tell instantly. And instantly you feel like that person isn't paying attention to you. It's a very weird thing because the person watching the video, I mean, I recorded that video a month ago. I wasn't looking at you, but you'll watch that video and be like, that, that person isn't engaging with me. They're engaging with the, the, the screen that's off to the side. So I like to have a screen that is uh, above. So anyways, so I can look at this camera and instantly, hey guys, how's it going? This is Matt here. We're going to go on a ride around uh, Iowa. Corn, corn, corn. Let's go. You know, so I can engage and have fun and talk to the camera as if it's my best friend. And that's not an easy thing. You know, especially if you're just getting started, it's difficult to communicate with an inanimate object, you know. But what I do when I make these videos is when I'm looking into this lens, I don't see a lens, I don't see a camera, I see all of you guys in the camera, you know. So uh, it was very hard for me when I first started making videos to do that, to look at the camera and then I'd be like, uh, hi, you know, I, uh, yeah, I'd be shy, you know, I'd be uncomfortable. Why? Because everybody's around me looking at me holding the camera. It's weird, you know. Obviously, that was like 15, 20 years ago. The, the culture has gotten a little bit more open to people holding cameras and looking at themselves. I don't know if that's such a great thing, but, but uh, so that's, that's a better. It's a better genre. It's a better, better time to be alive if you want to record videos. But I think you, it really important to make sure that when you're talking to yourself, which is what you're basically doing, or talking to everybody through that camera, that you emote, that you speak as if you're talking to your best friend, as if the people behind that lens are the people that are the most in tune with you and that you want to tell the, the most interesting stories to. Because, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of people out there that... Uh, think I'm an asshole, <laughs> you know, probably, you know, and they're going to be watching that video too, but I'm not looking at them. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to the people who are interested and those people are going to be watching and are going to appreciate the fact that you are talking to them in a friendly and an open and excited way. So it's a, it's a, it's like a, it's like a psychological thing that you have to do if you are interested in telling the stories. And, and speaking the stories as well, being the narrator of your video. Obviously, you don't have to narrate at all. You could just make a music-based video with, with nice, nice views or take the views, views out and just have a writing video where you're riding around and having a good time and, and, and let the video tell the story in itself. But I like to, <laughs> I like to talk. Do you, guys, do you guys know that? Can you tell? So, okay, so... Being comfortable in front of the camera is one thing. Having the right gear is not the most important, uh, but having it is, is fun. You know, I'm not going to deny that if you have the opportunity to fly a drone around, that you're not going to really enjoy that experience and what that adds to your stories. A lot of people that watch my videos enjoy the drone footage that I record in the videos. And so let's talk a little bit about that. I carry with me now, this is a... Um, Mavic Mini 3 Pro, and it weighs basically 300 and, uh, 249 grams, like nothing. The reason it weighs 249 and not 250 is that at the 250, you have to be licensed under the FAA to fly officially. So if, if you're under that, this is a toy. But if you're over that, it's a commercial video recording tool and you need uh, official licensing to do that. Now, I have had heavy drones when those regulations were around and nobody caught me and nobody sent me to jail and I don't think anybody's gonna cause you any problems if you do have a heavier drone. But now I think I feel a little bit more comfortable with the fact that I do have it and the quality from this drone is not sacrificing on the base that it's so light. This thing gets amazing footage. I'll show you in a second. Uh, the controller that I use has upgraded. I 
didn't always have this one. This is fairly new, but I actually have the screen which shows me the perspective of the drone's camera from the LCD display, which is awesome. And uh, when I fly the drone, you know, let's, let's see. People always ask me how I fly the drone and, the, and ride the trike at the same time. So let's see if I can do that right now. So I, I normally, I'll, I'll sit down in the trike and I'll have a moment where I'll see like, oh, that, that looks pretty cool up ahead, you know? And I have my drone in my bag right here and I'll pull out my drone and I'll have the controller sitting on my leg and I'll have the drone sitting on my knee. Oh, I didn't power it up, there we go. And uh, okay, so I just hit the power button and that's, let's see, that's, uh, all right, that's five seconds. It'll, it only takes about 15 to 20 seconds to get to the point to where my controller will display the view of, does, how, many, how many of you have not flown a drone? Okay, a lot of you, okay, good, good. I was wondering if, if this is futile of me telling you what, what the process is, but I think it's good actually. So, okay, so now I see all of you guys and it says unable to take off. It always does that for a little while until it finds the, okay, now it's ready. So. Uh, typically, like people ask me, how do I do this with two hands and one of them driving the trike? So I hold the drone, and in this case, I, I have to stop the, dr the stop the trike, but I don't have to stop it after this moment. Typically, what you do is you take both controllers and you put them down to the center, and that will start the drone and fly it. Just so you pull both of these handles towards the center. What I do is I use my mouth for one of them, and I use my finger for the other one and I put them to the center. Now the drone has started. Takeoff. Now, you might worry about it flying on the inside if you've never flown a drone, but this thing has sensors all in the bottom. So it's actually reading my leg, the difference in color between different sharp objects underneath the drone. And so it kind of can, geoloc it can locate itself even if there's no GPS, and it'll keep itself qu quite stable. And so I want to take off. I use my, my lip again and now it's up in the air. At this point in time, I can keep riding. Typically, I'll, I'll send it up so it doesn't get in my flags, or I'll move it off to the side, but I'll tell you what, you can move this drone, and it, it's very stable, you know, because it's reading what's going on below it. Obviously, if you're outside, it's using the GPS, and then it's even stronger. So typically, I'll, I'll, I'll move up, move off to the side, find a location where I can get the shot that I want. So flying a drone is turn left, turn right, go up, go down, move forward, move backward, move left, move right. And then it also has the zoom and gimbal. So you see a little camera on the front, you see how it's moving down, and you see how the camera on the front is moving up. So with all those movements, you can get a really amazing dynamic shot of, of flying around. Now, I'm not gonna fly over your heads or anything, but I was in Germany once, and I was flying at the Spetsy show in Germersheim, and uh, this German came up to me and he's like, you are going to kill somebody. <laughs> Boss, land this thing. I said, oh, hey. Uh, so I, anyways, but I'm pretty comfortable flying it around. But so what I'll, people ask me, they're like, cause there's auto functions on this where you can set it to follow you if you want to. But oftentimes I don't, I never use those. I always fly with my hands. And so because I have all of my shifting and my braking and my steering on one hand, I can drive this and I can do a turn shot so that as I'm riding past, it turns and follows me. I can also, use my other hand and do a, oh. Sometimes if you hit that button, it'll, it'll shift the camera to straight down. And so I'll use my other hand to move forward, left and right. And I'll just ride, obviously there's not a, not a lot of room here to ride around, but I can literally ride and then by looking at the screen and understanding how the buttons work, or if I'm going straight, I can use my elbows to steer the trike and I can fly the drone pretty comfortably around an entire room without having to worry about getting into any obstructions or anything. 
And I'm pretty, pretty good about, about that. And I can, I can kind of turn the camera up, you know, fly it around, get up into the lights, fly forward, come back down, do a zoom in. And all the while, as long as the road is straight, so a lot of times if you see me, you'll see my elbows in my videos. You'll see my elbows on the, on the sticks, or you'll see, you know, one hand operate. You'll very, very rarely see both hands on the, on the stick, unless I have the drone fixed in a place and I know I want that shot and then I just drive, drive past it and then I fly back. And then, of course, you know, if there's, if I'm flying a place I shouldn't, if I'm flying a place I shouldn't, typically I get the drone in my hand as quickly as possible if it lets me. And then it's back in my pocket and, and in the side bag as soon as possible before anybody notices. These drones are a lot quieter, more quiet than they used to be. The old ones were really, really loud and they were a lot larger. If you fly this drone more than, I don't know, 50 feet up in the air, you barely hear it if there's you know, stuff going on. And so, and obviously with everything, especially video, the more you do, the better you're gonna get. So you, know, you might see a lot of my video uh, projects and you'll say, oh my gosh, how did he do that? You know, or where did he go to film that? Or how is he doing that? That's pretty much how I do it. Now, when I fly, what shots am I getting? I separated a flight that I did while I was in Las Vegas and I thought that I would show it to you. Oh, no, no, the, this was in Corsica. This was a winding road. This, and you've, you've, if you watch my videos, you've seen some of it. So there was this really beautiful road, this one right here. And let's see here, let me open it up so that you can see just that video. Okay, and then I'll do this. So this, this, this was a really, really beautiful winding road that I rode up in Corsica. It was, it was a pretty steep angle. I was going pretty slow though, and I wanted to build this into my video. Now, you, you have to make sure that when you launch your drone that you're gonna get a number of shots to use. You can't just go up there and statically point your, point your device in one direction and say, that's gonna be my shot for the video. You have to have a bunch of different things and, and I'll show you what that means. So, the first shot I took off and okay, so you can see I'm, I'm right there in the bottom of the screen. I flew the drone and so my first shot after I took off was quite close to me. I just took it off, I flew forward to the next road, I pointed it away from me and I got a shot that I knew was gonna be away from me and it was gonna come across me and I was gonna come into the shot and then the expanse of the landscape was gonna open up too. So this was the first shot. Now I record consistently when I'm flying. I never turn off the drone. Everything is recorded because you never know even if you're turning the camera to position it for the next, next scene or next shot that you're shooting, you might have, that might be the coolest sh shot that you got and you don't wanna turn the camera off between that. So, okay, so I'm, I'm flying and I'm going and the camera's coming back. You're seeing the, the countryside and the hillsides below. You got the winding where this road is popping out in the corner. Hey, there I am right there. You can see I'm, I've got both hands and elbows on the, on, the, on the steering. And then you see the, the road in front, that car's turning, which that turned out to be a pretty cool shot. And then it's winding up and oh, the winding street keeps going. So I know that this period, this shot that I just, okay, so that was that piece right there, that was the first shot, right? And I know that I got that one series, that one part of the series. Then I moved the drone and I, I start searching for the next shot. I know that I wanna keep the ends of the, of the kickbacks in the shot, so I'm, I'm moving the camera out, and, and me moving the camera to the next shot became the next, the, the next piece of the sequence, you know? And that was just me moving around and looking for a cool shot. And here you can see I'm using the camera to, uh, using the drone to scout, which is a great tool. The drone, you send it up and you scout ahead, you find out maybe there's an interesting road ahead, maybe I need to save my battery for that road as well. You know, because obviously you don't want to use up all your batteries. Uh, so, okay, so now I'm moving and I'm like, I want this shot where I'm gonna see the uh, curvature here pronounced in the foreground and I want to see me 
which is there kind of coming around. So I decide what I'd really like to have is like a rotating shot where I'm right here. You can see a slow rotation. Slow movement is, is awesome. It really grabs the viewer. Often I like to stay away from completely static shots. So yeah, what happened there? Let's see. That sh yeah, that was the end. I must have hit pause. You know what I did? I took a picture. I really like that, so I actually stopped the drone from recording video and I took a picture. I repositioned the drone at that point and I did a top-down shot. I really like top-down shots. That's where you fly over the road, you get up to a height, and you point the drone camera straight down and you can see me sitting there riding up and I'm riding slow uh, up the hill. Now, one thing that you might notice when you watch my videos and if you, if you want to fly the drone and you want to ride at the same time, and I recommend this, go extra slow on your ride. Make sure that there's no cars around you that are going excessively fast. And then, so for example, this shot where I'm flying past and I'm slowly making my way up that hill, I'll go to 200 speed. So I'll take that clip and I'll go two times the speed. And then the, let's see here. So I position the shot. Let's take a look how it looks now. So now this is the shot at 200 speed. I'm looking like I'm going a little bit faster. It crosses over the shot and it's quite nice. So I like to speed up my shots by like two times. And then that gives you, <laughs> you get that motorcycle there. That thing's, that thing's going really fast at that point in time. That's like obnoxiously fast. Look at that motorcycle. Wah! So you can't have too many moving objects if you're going to double up speed because it's pretty obvious. But if it's just you and your trike, you can, you can quadruple the speed, go really, really slow, make sure that you're consistent in your speed, and then, and then speed it up. And you have that, because you're focusing on flying the drone, and sometimes you want to focus on the flying of the drone and not riding the trike. So go extra slow when you're recording. And then when you have it in the, in the editing process, you can double the speed, and then nobody will, nobody will be the wiser. Even in this shot here, you can see me coming and uh, the cars aren't uh, uh, going uh, obnoxiously fast. So then, uh, this is all basically one flight. Take it easy, guys. This is all basically one flight. And so by, by doing this this way, I can go through and find the best clips. And it looks like, and so a lot of people say, Matt, how many cameras do you have? Because it looked like you were coming from all of these different angles. And this is why it does that, is because when I'm, when I'm flying, I'm, I'm moving from one side to the other side, to top down, to forward to backward, to backward to forward, to a, a, a circular shot. I try to do as many as I can in each scene, and then I stitch them together and I splice them, and obviously put together some music, and, uh, and then they're, you're good. For, so for example, the CycleCon, video where, let's see here, where did, okay, so then you take the, take a few of those clips and, and I can do something like, way. like, I still have a ways to go. You know, so I had all of those scenes, all of those uh, angles that I could have used and you, so it gives you a lot of options. So, you know, really make sure that when you're traveling around that you do focus on B-roll. B-roll, okay, there's like A-roll and B-roll. A-roll is like me talking and having an interaction in the video. B-roll is beautiful shots, is stuff without sound, stuff that's gonna add to the A-roll. So the A-roll's the basic, and then the B-roll goes up in front of it, and a lot of that. Like, so for example, here, uh, this is all B-roll. I have a feeling I'm gonna to wanna to stop like a billion times. I have a feeling I wanna stop like a billion times. Well, that's not this clip, that's this clip. To capture every little thing. Hello. <laughs> so that's A-roll, but instead what I did is I put a bunch of B-roll over it so it sounded like this. I have a feeling I'm gonna to wanna to stop like a billion times to capture every little thing. Hello. <laughs> you see? So by adding a bunch of like beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful B-roll over your narrative, you're not having to suffer 
looking at my ugly mug for too long, you know? No, like here, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the drone, obviously, you're not going to keep that sound. Drones don't record sound, typically. I mean, they do nowadays. You can record from your controller, but you're not going to really use the sound from a drone. So right away, like, like this shot here, all of those, all of those B-roll shots were all drones, so, so no. But when I, when I have, like, for example, here, so I'm going to my tent. That was actual B-roll, so there's here. Okay, so I'm talking. Still in this country. That's B-roll. Headed south towards Rome. Let's try and make the most of it. That's A-roll, right? That's me talking. But this is B-roll, but with sound. You can hear the sound of, just the sound of me. It, actually, if, you, if I expand this, you can see. You see that, this hook here? This hook is pulling the audio down. So this is a fade, you know, so this is a sound fading away. And you can tell by the waveform, you can tell by the waveform that's talking and that's nothing, you know what I mean? Like I can, I, I can look at a waveform, I can almost say, hear what I'm saying, <laughs> but I like looking at the waveform, which is kind of crazy. So I, I wanted to have some, some ambience there and then I wanted that ambience to fade out. So can you guys hear it when I played the, when I played the clip? Okay, so, you, so you, basically you're here. And you have that, okay, you have the, the, the music that's moving as well. So like, for example, you see the music hook that's coming up and you have the uh, B-roll hook that's going down. And when you have the two working together, you have, uh, you have a most of it. So the music's rising, the sound is going away, and you have these B-roll shots. So like these three shots I shot together. So this was actually first. I was going through this tunnel and I thought that was kind of nice. I was just holding the camera in front of me, recording what was in front of me. Then I saw, and you can see it at the end of this, this hall is this. <laughs> you can't tell, but the, that's after this. And so I set up the camera two times. And so I wanted the camera to record me coming and it was kind of funny if, if the extent of this, this clip was this lady was, <laughs> was standing there and she stops and she looks at the camera and I was like, okay, well, I can't necessarily use all that. Sometimes they, go, they don't know, they're trying to help. They're, oh, sorry, sorry, but they're all in the shot. So I did that and then this shot is all basically a continuous shot. And I'll show you, let's see here. If I take it and put it up above, you'll see. It's kind of a longer shot. So I take it. And if you look at it, this is ramped up 300 times, 300 times speed. So the real, the real, uh, I'm going to nest this and then bring it out into another uh, bit here so I can show you. So this is what I recorded coming up. And you can see now that it's, it's sped up. And then I turned the camera as I sat next to it and made sure that it was good. And then I continued the ride. And then I left my bag open. Damn it, I left my pannier open. I always do that. And then I stop, and then, uh, and then, I, and then you can see me actually walk back into the camera. And I, you know, I very rarely do that. You know, you leave that in. Sometimes I leave that in. So, but, but the actual speed of that clip was quite slow, um, and I sort of took my time. And so that's, that's actual speed. And so what I ended up doing is I sped it up and... A lot of times when you speed things up, they get a little bit more poppy and a little bit more interesting in my opinion. But yeah, so like, yeah, let's see here. Plate. Yeah, I'm trying to find, there's a lot, I, I have a lot of videos. So yeah, let me go back and we'll go back to the beginning. So yeah, so then you could see the hooks at the bottom here. This is the music. It's gonna go down so that you can hear my talking, and then the talking is going to come up. Um, I have a, a website called Epidemic Sound, and we can go to it. Yeah. No, it's like 25 bucks a month. It's not cheap, but the, the service is, um, they, uh, it's in Chinese, Epidemic. I have Chinese turned on. You ever have that problem? You're trying to type English and the Chinese all, I bet you do. 
And so I have an account with Epidemic Sound, and so, huh? Royalty free? Yeah, you know, you, you program it, and when you start up your account, you tell the uh, Epidemic Sound account what you're gonna be posting to, and you can use as many music, as much as music as you want. Any length? There any length? You, okay, let's look, let's look. Dusty Dex. And then I know this artist, she's gonna break into a bit of a beat after this. I like this song. I can use this whole song. Yeah, I can use as many. Now, I used to use a product called Audio Jungle, and then you had to buy each track. It was like $15 per, per, per song. Here, you pay $25, and I post a lot of videos. So it works out really well, and if, to, for the life of the contract. So like if I cancel my Epidemic Sound account, from the day I cancel it on, I can't use their service or their music. But they, for some, so, somehow, they know that like, like I won't instantly lose monetization on all my previous videos. It knows those songs were from when I had the account. So, so anything up in, in the period of time you have that, that, that membership, you can use it. And, so, and the other cool thing about it is, so you see this full mix, you can actually download just the melody without, without anything else. You can download just the bass. You can, you can mix all of these tracks yourself. So they actually have the ability for you to really get into there and be, uh, be, be focused. And you can choose, you know, I, so you kind of go, go through and you can choose beats per minute, you know, so you can choose and, and find like, I want, a, I want a fast paced poppy song or I want like a slow kind of soothing song. You can choose all sorts of different, just, just the banjo. I've actually used this, you know. And then you can go the hip hop and jazz and it's, it's a very, very extensive catalog of, of songs. So yeah, very, very cool there. Um, but uh, yeah, do you have a question? Oh, oh, I it, was, it was a fly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so music, I, I am really, I really like having music coming into and out of uh, different points of time. Uh, some people actually would rather he hear more natural, but uh, you know, drone shots don't have anything behind them. You know, so otherwise, I mean, look at the look at the beauty of of this. That is just an amazing shot. And if I didn't have the right tune behind it, it would it would be dead. There would be nothing that could make that interesting. You know. I was so nervous about doing this ride today. So there, I'm, I'm sitting down, I'm focusing, and I, you can see me controlling the drone and at I've that moment. And I've gone through this series of emotions so many times where I'm like, oh, this is going to be scary. Oh, it's a new country. Oh, it's a bridge. Oh, there's tunnels. Oh, there's traffic. And I would have to say, 99% of the time, I am pleasantly surprised. And here you can see the Italian song coming up. You know, that, that was really, really cool shot. You can't see the vividness of that, but the clouds behind me were amazing. This was Lake Garda in Italy. So the other thing I kind of wanted to talk about is, is this, this thing that I said here. Where I'm like, oh, this is going to be scary. Oh, it's a new country. Oh, it's a bridge. Oh, there's tunnels. Oh, there's traffic. And I would have to say, 99% of the time, I am pleasantly surprised. Now, these are thoughts that all of us have, right? Like. Feeling, feelings of doubt, feelings of excitement, feelings of uh, resolution and understanding of, of our ride, and, and maybe we're surprised. Maybe we're surprised at our own our own perception of things. I'm constantly having these feelings. These are things that that you know I think are worthy of sharing. You know, so you know I think that a lot of people that might want to share their 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 travels or their their interests or or anything through through their video they might not understand that that is something that that is interesting for other people to hear if you can enunciate it clearly and you can do it in some sort of a fun and interesting way you know um a lot of people especially when i first started and i was said i told people i'm like i'm going to make a video every day they're like, you can't make a video every day. How are you going to find something to talk about every day? You can't do that. 
Well, we're all constantly having uh, introspective journeys while we travel throughout our day. You know, we think about things, we, we talk to people, we interact with the world around us, and it's understanding how to input that into the video form and share it in some sort of a fun way that really makes it worthwhile for me. I really enjoy doing that and being able to like, I like having conversations with people, you know? And now I can have a conversation with, with people all over the world. <laughs> it's a one-sided conversation, mind you. Sometimes I'll meet some, some, somebody in, in the middle of, of Cambodia and they'll be like, hey Matt, how's your daughter, Eva? I'll be like, I don't know who you are, sir, but uh, she's doing okay, you know? That person knows me quite well because I've shared so much in so many different ways on my, on my YouTube channel. And a lot of you have come up to me and said hello and, and know a lot about me. And I unfortunately don't know much about you, but I'd like to know more. But the, the objective through the video is to do that, to share those things. So I'm obviously accomplishing the goal, you know, in a lot of different ways, maybe not with everybody, but with a selective people who are interested in the journey. So, um, I mean, we're, we're basically wrapping up here, but I, I, I just, don't be, don't be nervous, you know? A lot of times your, your fear of um, being weird or, or, you know, holding a camera in front of you and, and, and will, will uh, uh, keep you away from getting the shot that you really wanna get, will keep you away from sharing the story that you really wanna share. Maybe, you know, sharing. Oh, it's a new country. Oh, it's a bridge. Oh, there's tunnels. Oh, there's traffic. And I would have to say, 99% of the time, I am pleasantly surprised. You know, maybe you, you feel awkward sharing that. That's like kind of a personal thing, you know. But don't, because awkward is an emotion, you know. And if you can share that with other people who might feel the same way about that, you're going to provide value in your video to somebody, whether that's, you know, somebody doing a lifestyle vlog like that, obviously you're gonna share those personal things. Some people might just wanna share, you know, the, uh, you know, you know, the beautiful drone footage and s stick to that without doing the narrative, but that's not necessarily what I want completely. That's a, look at that road. That was an awesome road. So I'm doing some beach riding for the first time. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Last five minutes? Yeah, uh, I don't like this one. <laughs> I don't like this one, it's great. I used Adobe Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro is a suite of products, right? So uh, Premiere Pro is one of the suite of products. They have Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, everybody has heard. I mean, Kleenex is the word for tissue. Editing pictures is, is Photoshop, right? Uh, did you Photoshop that? I mean, it's because it's pretty ubiquitous for, for editing. Lightroom is an amazing photography uh, Adobe product. Adobe has an amazing suite, but you pay for it. I bought this when I, okay, I bootlegged it first when I was really young and I got an illegal copy, you know, to start out. And then oh, as soon as I got money, I paid $2,500 for the suite of products back when it was not subscription. And then it switched to subscription model and forced me to pay $50 a month on top of that. I'm like, I paid $2,500. I should have the grandfathered in lifetime license. But no, they still make me pay. So I, I mean, they're good product. It's really, you know, it, it does everything I want. It's a little complicated, you know, for, for newbies, but it's great, it's just costly. If you have an Apple and you're starting fresh and you're editing your first video and you have a couple of bucks, uh, Final Cut I think is amazing. If, if, I had an, uh, if I started on a Mac and I was an Apple guy from, I was started on Windows, that's why I'm saying that. I started you know, as, a, as a Microsoft guy, so Adobe worked with that. Um, but I would have probably done Final Cut. The third option is probably the winner is everybody seems, all the YouTube community seems to be moving to DaVinci Resolve. Uh, DaVinci Resolve is, it's basically, it's like 300 bucks if you wanted to pay, uh, and it's a one-time licensing fee. It's got a lot of member-created options, so the kind of thing is open source. There's a lot of like really amazing plugins for it, and it's, it, it didn't used to be so good, but it's really good now. 
So if you guys really want to have a product that you want to start working with, and you're, you have, yeah, the problem is I'm polluted by Adobe Premiere Pro. I, I, I keep trying to switch, and everything is like, ah, it's so easy. I know how to do it really quick in, this, uh, in, in Premiere Pro. I don't want to, and I always go back. But if you're fresh and you're starting, I would say pick up a copy of uh, da, da Vinci Resolve. They have a Photoshop knockoff. You know, so they can edit photos and stuff. They've got an After Effects kind of functionality. Really, really great, really great. So uh, that's what I would recommend. I mean, listen, if you, if you have an iPhone, you can use like iMovie, and that's just an app, you know. You can get some apps and stuff and start if you just wanna figure out how to slice and put clips together and understand how a timeline works, but DaVinci Resolve is, is a product I would recommend. Anybody else? No, no, I was, uh, I was a businessman in China, and I had started up a group called the Asia English Business Network, which was like, uh, you know the Chamber of Commerce, the local Chamber of Commerce might have a mixer where you'd go and you'd pass out business cards and you'd say, hi, my name's Matt, you know, I, I, I do this. Well, I, w I created my own one of those in China because there was nothing to introduce English-speaking business owners to factory, Chinese-speaking factory owners. And so I created this organization, AEBN, Asia English Business Network, and I recorded it and just, just for my own records, like so people would talk, so I would remember, okay, that's Bill, he's an accountant or whatever, you know? And one of the people in the group uh, was the owner of a magazine called the Ningbo Focus. And the Ningbo Focus was a bilingual uh, a magazine, the business magazine, and they were in touch with all of the businesses in Ningbo and uh, a city of nine million people in China, a small village. And so like she was approached by the Ningbo government to produce a TV show, like an actual, like a travel style, like Ningbo focus on all of these different elements, businesses and places and travel and food. And she didn't know anything about video, didn't know anything, but she came to my meetings. It's amazing how this and this can come together, you know, it's really, really awesome, you know, because that changed my whole life. She came up to me and said, hey, I've got this opportunity to do this TV show. Ningbo TV came up to me, which was the cable, sh cable uh, the district, you know, for, for the area. And they said, we have this opportunity to do this TV show. I don't know anything about TV or making videos, but I saw you recording the meeting. And I'm like, recording? I was just pointing the camera at people talking. But she was like, I, I have an opportunity to do a pilot. They want me to do a pilot. And she's like, can you do it? I says, I'll give it a go. So I got a camera and I got a co-host. Her name was Melody, a beautiful little, Chi uh, little Chinese girl. And I gave her a script and we went on to Chen Huang Miao, which was this shopping district for old like Chinese trinkets and stuff. And we made a video and we pitched it to Ningbo TV uh, on behalf of Ningbo Focus, the, the magazine. And uh, the Ningbo TV, they were like, Ex expecting like a four minute segment of a 12 minute show, they said, forget it, you're doing the whole thing. And they gave her a contract for 24 episodes of this TV show that was gonna go on like cable TV every week, every two weeks. And it was gonna go out to like 7 million people viewership. And uh, like, like a real show, you know? And so they, they said, you got this contract. And she came up to me and she's like, you have this contract and gave me the contract and I started producing this TV show. That was really official. It was scouting locations, scripting the, the content, getting advertising revenue, you know, talking to co-hosts, you know, going through, through and having a cameraman and everything and shooting all these shots and editing it together. And I sat in front of the computer for like the first time with, cause I had been doing graphic arts. So I'd been using the illustrator and stuff portions of Adobe. So I'm like, well, Adobe has this Premiere Pro thing. Let's figure this out. And that first video took me two weeks, morning, night, morning, night, morning, night, morning, night, learning how to, to everything, you know? It took, I mean, I was there all, all, like 24 hours a day for two weeks. And the next one, it was 24 hours a day for 10 days. And then the next one was 24 hours a day for a week. And then, then I got better and better and better. And then uh, at the end of that contract, I learned that I really loved video. And so that's kind of, the long short of, of, of that. I, I, was, I was offered this opportunity to do the TV show. It became popular. I found out that I had the passion for it. I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed sharing the stories. And then, so I picked it up and kept doing it. And when I traveled around the world, climbed Everest, 
uh, that was when I climbed Everest, I really was like the first really first 50 episodes of my my lifestyle vlog was that climbing of Everest. So, you know, that was that was that was kind of like I really wanted to share these experiences a unique unique. So anyways, thank you so much. And I think that's that's about it. Right. Three o'clock.